discover who our leads are going to be. Rishi is going to, or uh, Artan's going to be sending out the Rillaboom and Gothitelle. Rishi, the Smeargle, and the Calyrex. Both of these teams, I believe, running a Smeargle. Let's see. And we saw this in Game 3. This is probably the best opener uh Grishi can throw out here because you threaten the fake out to stop the trick room. You also have the taunt to stop anything that the Smeargle does. You can force it into a situation where it needs to swap out, but once again, can't swap out because of that shadow tag. And then once it's onto that first turn, it has to go for the second fake out, which is a cancel. And then you can once again taunt that Calyrex and prevent the... <laughs> The setup once again, so yeah. it is a long delayed turn. Oh, the double fake out here. A crit! Oh, the crit! Oh my. So it's both finished. Pokemon not going to be able to move, which means Rishi is going to get a full turn of just that extra damage. That heal up, though, is really just going to mean Calyrex couldn't move last turn. That's really all that changes here. So Smeargle starting with a bit of damage. Smeargle. Go for the decorate. Yeah, I don't disagree. We just have to see where, if this taunt comes out and where it comes out onto. Something that's also very relevant with this Smeargle, we saw it earlier today. If it gets hit by this taunt, it's very devastating. It basically becomes a brick that can't really accomplish much. And this Gothitelle is running taunts. You gotta watch wow, that, that Smeargle goes down. That early crit mattered so much yeah, in this I think early that... knockout. Now the taunt goes over to oh. the Calyrex, preventing the Trick Room. And now Rishi is up so many turns here. That's yeah. what we call in the fighting community an option select, okay? When, it's <laughs> a, when an option, a choice just beats all the other options, you just go for it. That taunt hits the Smeargle, great. If you knock out the Smeargle and it hits the Calyrex instead, great. You just press those two buttons, you press it on the same Pokemon, it doesn't matter, you win either way. Yeah, Artem made a really risky play there just by trying to force the, trying to still force the Trick Room through against the Gothitelle and he'll have to learn to adapt to play against that. I don't know if he's played against this Gothitelle team earlier today and now he's started to learn some of the pitfalls that he can fall into against Gothitelle. Just we'll have to see top. how he can adapt going forward. Such a flexible Pokemon. It is very capable of pressuring a lot of different team types and Shadow Tag, such a unique ability that really changes the dynamic of VGC a lot. Obviously, singles is known more as like the switching uh, format, but VGC, it can be just as important and not being able to do it can have quite devastating impacts. We're going to see the Gothitelle leave, freeing up these two Artan's Pokemon, but we're going to see the Rotom come out instead, threatening this Calyrex. We're going to see the Terrastalization come out as well. Lily might be trying to buff up his Calyrex to make it a little bit safer. That's exactly what he's going to be doing. This fire type terrestrialization now, this Rotom might not be in a very favorable position. Either. Yeah, Rishi's Rillaboom actually is running the U-turn instead of the high horsepower. So it doesn't have much to deal with the fire type Calyrex, really only doing about a quarter of its health there, and now will get off the Glacial Lands and do a ton of damage. There's the Wicked Blow into the Rillaboom, wow. gets it down real low for the finish with Glacial Lance. Oh, so it's not running a... Uh... It's not running Sash, it just survived that, incredible. Yeah, just survived that. It's running Miracle Seed actually to boost those grass type attacks. But Rillaboom goes down, and we do see the Calyrex gets the plus one attack stat now. We'll get some healing thanks to that grassy terrain. Protect, you can get back almost up to full and pretend that Rillaboom didn't do anything. Yeah, and now he's bringing this Rotom again on his team, and I don't know if I love that choice, especially when the Calyrex is going to always be tearing, tear, <laughs> terra typing fire. You maybe want to bring in that Ting Lu. I know it's a bigger risk, but I don't know. You just don't have that offensive pressure, especially without high horsepower. Yeah, I think Rotom's a great choice against the Terra Grass uh, variants of um, of Ice Rider. We've seen the Terra, the Terra Water variants, but we are seeing again these just Soul. These Soul Terra fire types in these top rounds. We do get the Dark type Terra from Gothitelle. Yep. Probably going for the foul play. I don't know if this knocks out at plus one. It's pretty low, maybe. It wow. will do a lot, but not enough to get the knockout. Thunderbolt, though, will pick up the kill. Fire Beautiful play by Rishi. Yeah. That Dark type Terrestrialization also helping just protect it from the Wicked Blow that would inevitably have come out um, against that Gothitelle. Uh, facing that down as a Psychic type would be brutal, but at the very least... Oh, I just going to go to the Rotom instead. A crit, of course, thanks to that uh, secondary part of the move. Going to send Rotom out of the battle for now. But with Ursaluna being the last Pokémon next to this Urshifu, Coridon coming out now. You're out of your Restricted. Now you have to face down your opponents. You have a normal type on the field. It, it is looking a little scary for you. I'm not sure what type of Urshifu or uh, Ursaluna we're going to be seeing here. It's got Life Orb, no protect this this Ursaluna is as good as gone 
Yeah, this Earth Loon is going to be in a lot of trouble. Again, no redirection because Smeargle went down so early. This might be a game one win for Rishi, but there have been some incredible comebacks later, and I don't think R10 is quite done yet. It's still a flat 2v2, let's be honest. He just cleared that early one and has the type of advantage here. The collision course, though, needs the one-hit knockout, and, and it, it gets it. Yeah, but thanks to the collision course, the secondary effects is going to do double damage against super effective, or at least boosted damage it's against 30%. super effective. Yeah, 30% boost when it's super effective. Huge damage regardless. Foul play onto the Urshifu now. Not going to be very effective. It's going to resist, and that's going to be Wicked Glow coming out now onto the Coridon. Not doing a lot. Too. So it's looking pretty bleak for our ton here. And like you said, Matthias, probably Rishi taking game one. Yeah, locked into the choice band here. Doesn't have another choice. It's got to just fully commit to the choice band throughout the whole thing. But oh, it's see it's there taking the win is going to be Rishi Guptra in the first game of the set. Rishi playing so excellently that first game. That was uh, that was one of probably the more simple and straightforward matches we've seen so far. Of course, still very high level play coming up from both players, but there's not a lot of super secret knowledge checks you gotta worry about. Can I do this? Can I do that? Is he gonna go for the terrors? Everybody kind of just played straightforward, and ultimately Rishi's gonna come out on top there. But that's usually how game ones usually go. Everyone's playing straightforward. Nobody's taking too big of a risk. You just gotta try to play your game. Get a feel out for your opponent. Game two is where you really start to see some of the crazier mind games. And one thing I do want to say is, once again, the big uh, counters to these Karadon teams are just not there on this Ice Rider mm -hmm. team. You don't have that Pelipper to set up the rain to clear that sun. You don't have anything that can deal with that Shadow Tag. And there's just so many good counters out there. And what I really feel like is especially strong about that uh, Karadon team is even if it does kind of get countered out, it's such a flexible Pokemon fighting and... Uh, uh, dragon type and fire e and fire you can use fire with the terrestrialization there's like three different types that you're pretty comfortable hitting with even losing the sun it's not that big of a deal for you exactly. yeah i think i do think where he struggled the most was fighting against gothitelle arton like maybe he's not comfortable fighting against Garth gothitelle right now so he's gonna have to figure out what he needs to do to beat mm -hmm. gothitelle and play just a bit smarter he really tried to f push through and force that trick room to go up in that second turn and really just led to wasted turns for him i think he just cannot lead with that smear smeargle calyrex because that seems to have been figured out by but smeargle calyrex has beaten rishi earlier today but only because i think of a mechanical like a little bit of a mechanical uh, mess up there because i think if he plays it correctly if he plays it perfectly well like he did this match it like it's I don't even see a world in which he can play out of it because it's just restricting his movement so much. There's a lot of opportunities that both these players can find. I think, obviously, especially in VGC, your lead is super, super important. I think in this matchup, more so, because it really does set the momentum. If you are leading with the Smeargle into the Gothitelle, your game just gets so much harder. But on the flip side, of course, if you do lead that Smeargle with your Calyrex in a favorable matchup, the game just gets so much easier. We're going to see the same leads coming out from both players here, but now with that knowledge in mind of how your opponent wants to play, hopefully you'll be able to make some better decisions. Yeah, I wouldn't be shocked if we see maybe a Protect here, if we see a Follow Me. The hard part is the double fake out. Yeah, if you're R10, are you predicting him to do the same thing again? It looks like he tried to switch, but again, that Gothitelle with the Shadow Tag forced to stay in. Going for, for the deck right here for the fake the double fake out and the taunt threatening is just so strong i think we're going to see that double fake out again there's no reason not to press it unless rishi kind of outplays himself and goes for like a mind read like super high brain uh you know check say going for a terror really early i mean why not you don't you don't have the threat of that uh, high horsepower so no just stop that grass coverage from hitting at a heart at all yeah, the other thing we are seeing is we are seeing the close combat instead of the stomping tantrum. And maybe if he had stomping tantrum, that would be a real decision in this matchup here. Exactly. There's so the there's taunt. the taunt. He's making him unable to do anything here yeah. for the taunt. Cannot so use Smeargle's decorate. Now, yeah, Smeargle's now stuck. Like, you don't even need to use Spanko on the Goth Del for this opener for it to be that strong. Yeah. Yeah. Smeargle great. can't decorate. Smeargle All can't fake, fake out. out. Here comes the Glacial Lance. That's all he can do here, because it'll get stopped at the time if he gets switched over. Yeah. Yeah, you're basically just stuck with a little runt on your team that is just doing absolutely nothing. The best part is for Rishi, he doesn't even want to get rid of it. Now it's a 1v2. This Smeargle can quite literally do nothing. But 
at the same time, you still have a whole Calyrex on the side of your team. This Pokemon has been brought to so many things for a reason. It's capable of doing a lot of things, but can it take on a 1v2 of some of the best support slash um, pivot slash skirmish Pokemon in the meta right now? The Woodhammer is going to do decent enough damage, but the Glacial Lance is going to hit the Rillaboom for sure, and maybe even taking it out. Yeah, that's he is going to take out the Rillaboom. That's a really important knockout there. The question is, does Foul Play one more time knock out that Calyrex? I don't think it gets knocked no. out, but bringing out the second Pokemon will ensure the double hit, and I think that could get the knockout. I think what's the best part for Rishi here is now the game is predictable. He knows exactly what his opponent can and can't do. He knows the Spear Girl's not going anywhere. There's no switch -ins. It's just cutting the considerations you have to make by half. Now the only you have to worry about is Calyrex's moves. Even the Calyrex can't switch out. So. What move is Calyrex going to go for? Do you get a Trick a Room or Glacial Land to that That's point. basically it, right? That's the only stuff you have to worry about. And you can just set up yourself to be in a good situation for no matter what move he goes for. You can try to play around the Trick Room. You can try to play around the... Uh, the the uh, Glacial Lance. And on top of that, actually, you could try to just taunt for the Trick Room, waste one of his turns if he goes for that. And then you're taunt right again. Out. Yeah, and then you could just tear onto your Coridon, so it resists a Glacial Lance. I kind of figured out maybe that might just be the play. Taunt and then, uh, you know, fire Terra on your Coridon. There's a turn for you. Yeah, I thought he was actually going to go for the Protect here, but it looks like he's going pure offensive with the Glacial Lance. Now, we did see Terra Dark Goth until last time do a lot of that damage. We're not seeing it this time. We'll see how this damage calc runs out. Again, R10 needs to win this game and get to the finals here. There's the fake out again, can't do anything. And that's the downside of Smeargle. Smeargle needs an attack move. Here comes Collision Course oh, into Smeargle. Interesting. Oh, one. Sash. Breaks the Sash, but why would you attack Smeargle? You can just leave it alive. Well, you can just ensure that it's an easy clear later yeah, on. You don't want to have to be put in a position where it's a risky play. But No, oh, he's just knocking, knocking out, out Smeargle. Interesting. Rishi, that is an interesting play. Maybe Rishi wants an honorable duel. He's <laughs> up one game. He feels comfortable. But now, this is going to be a very dangerous game for him. It's going to be an incredibly dangerous game, as we are probably going to see the Urshifu come out and put on that pressure. Or the Ursa Luna Blood Moon with the Hyper Voice, but yeah, it's going to be that Urshifu. You know what I'm actually considering now is the fact that Taunt is an eternal. I think Taunt was going to run out the next turn. Do you really want to be dealing with the Smeargle here? I don't think so. I think I you could you could cycle the Taunt, though, for sure. Yeah. I don't know if you can. We know Gothitelle's Goth Goth faster. Okay. Gothitelle is yeah. faster in this matchup, so Gothitelle could have just, yeah, would have cycled it. Now it's the question, is Gothitelle going to attack this turn? Or do you just try and focus on the Crydon, who could, who could also protect the turn? Or do I you just taunt on the Calyrex? I think you have to just go for an attacking move here. Either way, you just stall one turn, you're right back to where you are. You want to try and take this without your Crydon taking damage. So you want to try and take down this Calyrex as soon as you can. Yeah, Godstail is going to protect. I do not hate that move. Try and get some of the grassy terrain health back. He can strike through protect. But it, can't, it could have used Wicked Blow, you're totally correct, but there's the collision course. Probably into that Urshifu. Urshifu not going to take that very nicely. Ooh. No, it goes down. So Blood Moon is all that remains. Ah, oh, I forgot Dark Type is weak to fighting, so that's going to be a guaranteed KO on that Urshifu. Only really one Pokemon left on uh, on Artan's side of the field here, but the Glacial Lance is going to knock out the Crydon but I think it's pretty manageable. I think Rishi is maybe playing, expecting an Among, uh, uh, among us, an Amoongus yeah, on nice. the enemy team because he wants to be able to have that taunt ready. For well, that R10 doesn't have Amoongus. R10 has Grimmsnarl in the back. Oh, you're right. Maybe mm. even for this, he's just playing for the support mods at this point. Maybe, but that Blood Moon in the back is very scary. Oh, Tingloo's pretty scary as well, though. Yeah, Tingloo's incredibly scary. Foul play is incredibly scary, but you cannot Dis the blood, the blood moon again. Tinglu lowering the special attack stat of everything. Gonna go for the hyper voice, probably glacial lance combo, or do you protect? A lot of things to consider here. You might have to protect. Out. Yeah, I think the protect is a great move here. You'll have to, you'll probably leave something open, or double protect this turn. But Gothitelle has to do something. It protected last turn, so Gothitelle will have to do something this turn. 
feel like you might want to try going for a taunt, especially with that Ursaluna coming out. But at the same time, your Ting Lu, fairly slow, at least I just guessed by looking at it, maybe slower than the Ursaluna. In either case, you really don't want this Calyrex going first, but Calyrex is going to go for the Protect here. And now it's just going to be the rest of the Pokemon here left to play. Gothitelle going to go for the Foul Play on the Calyrex. It's going to get blocked, and now it's just these two Terrestrial <gasps> He went creatures. for Fisher. Ooh. Oh, it missed. But Stomping Tantrum coming out next turn. Yeah, it is going to be a Stomping Tantrum hovering On the over. Calyrex. On the Calyrex. Probably on the Calyrex. I think that, that is, is a knockout. 100% that's going to be a knockout. It's a Fire type. It's going to have boosted damage. It's going to be a stab. And Calyrex is not going to be able to. So I think. I think this is going to come down to a Fissure on the next turn. I think. Yeah. <laughs> or you try think, to go for I a double Blood protect. Moon if Blood Moon Ursuluna is faster, it's not. Tinglu is the fastest thing on the field. It lives a wow. 1 HP! Wow. How is that even possible? It lives. Calyrex has been living all day, and it pulls it out one more time to live on 5 HP, and R10 pushes this to game three. That's, wow. That's insane. The amount of times we've seen Calyrex survive on ranges, I think it survived every range possible today. Calyrex Actually. has been absolutely insane today, and R10 pushes it to game three. You see the stress on his face of what an insane matchup. Yeah, that is absolutely wow. insane. The fact, if that Fissure hit, different game entirely. Yeah, but, but, actually, you're, ba but you're banking on a 30% Fissure hit. He really was I think you'd him. have to go for the double Fissure to ensure that but, game win, but he wouldn't have done that. But honestly, the lower chance than Fissure is that Calyrex surviving, exactly. right? So I can't even I can't even put that into the factor list here. The fact that that Calyrex surviving, completely unprecedented. I didn't even think it was close in the calculation range, but I guess it's just that tanky. I mean, we talk about the power of Calyrex. I mean, look, Calyrex had to solo most of that fight. I think Rishi really taking out Smeagol there put him at a disadvantage as it mm. allowed Art Art10 to bring in something else to help Calyrex. Calyrex was stranded. Calyrex was alone, but he brought in. He was able to bring in something else to help it and win that battle at the end. Yeah, I think that's where it was a little bit of a have a misplay. I think he really wanted was banking that he would bring on another support mon. He wanted to clear the supports before mm. he took on the DPSs because if any more setup would have made it much more difficult. But I think the fact. I don't know. Yeah, it was just clearing that it's, smear goal kind of put things a little bit more loosey goosey for uh, our ten. The only way to find way. out would just be asking him after this match. I probably yeah, really. wouldn't mind doing that myself. Just it's so interesting. If you're if you haven't come to any of these events, hearing these players talk about Pokemon is some of the most interesting discussions you can hear. The amount of perspectives you can have on one single game, the exact same game. Four different people can look at it and see it in completely different ways, and all those ways could be correct. There's no single way to look at or break down a battle or a single analysis that's 100% clear-cut, except if you're running Calyrex with a follow me, because there's always one button to press, and that's yeah. Glacial Lance follow me. But in any case, overall, with general Pokemon battling, there's so much to consider, and that's uh, another reason it's very and important. I think Rishi has an amazing opening here. Like, even against people that aren't uh, the Calyrex and Smeargle, it's amazing. But no, it's going to happen when we're going to see the run the back. I'm shocked we actually haven't seen the Fergograph Fur come out anytime. He, as it would he block has those fake outs. I, didn't even realize, I think Fergograph would be an insane lead here. You can't swap out. Smart. Oh, but you'd have to lead it, yes. You would lead you it, at least and get then you have, a turn. Yeah, you, you have two chances to room. put up Trick Room. You block Fake Out. You do a ton of damage. We are just going to see the Terra, no threat. Terra Lance here right off the bat. Because if you do lead with the Fur Graph, you block the double Fake Out. They're not going to be able to knock out your Calyrex on the first turn. You could at least guarantee a Trick Room because of that. Or, yeah, because there's no Fake Out to worry about. You get a Trick Room well, up, but... Yeah, but then the taunt comes to play. There's still a lot of pressure, but yes, True. I agree that it'd probably be a little bit more of a flexible opening because you could also help in hand the Glacial Lance. But mm. nonetheless, let's stop talking about ifs. Let's see what's going on right here, right now. We've seen the opening. The double fake out pressure is happening. There's always that choice. Maybe you just forego it because your enemy might do something you don't suspect. But once again, we're seeing that fire terror type. Yeah, we know Calyrex that even if it takes the fake out, it heals back up to full thanks to the grassy train on the next turn. So I think it, as much as it doesn't want to be fake out, there's the one. Yeah, really only doing about seven points of damage. There's the double fake out doing a lot more to Smeargle. Smeargle can't move and the Calyrex can't move. So it's a nothing turn. Smeargle will get some health back. Calyrex will get some health back. 
and Asmigro should out. get taunted next turn. <laughs> Most likely. Uh, and what can you really do about it if you are if you're uh, our taunt? Really, nothing. You can't switch. You can't no. change anything up. You just gotta. You, take you, the taunt. you could take a risk by going. There's the grass guy. Wait, he's just removing Smeargle from the field. Very interesting choice coming up from Rishi. Again, I'm sure he has his reasons for doing so, but from what we've been able to... Oh, he maybe just wants to completely nullify the threat of the Trick Room. I guarantee the taunt and then have a very easy way of dealing with the Calyrex. But then again, making any switch-ins into this Calyrex still is pretty hard to do so. Rillaboom is going to go down, so you at least you get your switch-in now. I think doing that, getting rid of that Smeargle, makes you have to consider so many more options such a risky move taunting the calyrex because it's a risk for him to go and not do the glacial lance because glacial lance nothing can stop that at that point no. aside from a protect but outside of that a lot of things can stop that trick room i think rishi expected r10 to play the same way he played in game one but r10 switched it up he decided he's just going to go full force offense here we will see the sucker punch now do you hit go do you go for sucker punch or do you go with wicked blow that is the question you here. If go with Wicked Blow. If you go for Sucker Punch and Gothel doesn't attack, you've just wasted a turn. I think you have to go with consistency here. Maybe the Sucker Punch is the play you threaten anything that dares to attack you. Yeah. Chat, chat pointing out the 5D chest. That really is what it feels like. So many different moves on different moves on different moves that have to happen here in these tight battles. And now we're seeing the Sucker Punch. The only real risk at play there is if he just goes for a switch and then your Urshifu is wasting one of his precious, precious turns. But with that Protect coming up, uh, that's not going to hit through because she's technically not attacking. So that's going to get... Wait, we're not seeing Terra on Coridon. You're right. Oh, that's true as well. So it's going to be vulnerable to the Glacial Lance. It's going to KO. But maybe he wants to save the Terra for Ting Lu, potentially. That puts Ting Lu's survivability through the roof. Yeah. I think I think Karada may be able to live this one out. Because there's no there's one chilling nay on here. It's still going to hit like a truck. And no, yeah. it's not. One's more now, than enough for the Karada, again, being weak to chilling, being weak to that Glacial Lance is almost a guaranteed death sentence at that point. Mm -hmm going for the foul play, but we've seen this calc. I don't think the plus two foul play is enough to kill uh, to kill the Ice Horse. Stomping Tantrum might be able to. Yeah, Stomping Tantrum is totally a possibility. I'm just worried about this Ursaluna here. We're seeing the special attack, so this Blood Moon is going to be slightly less threatening. However, this Ursaluna being on this field still, I, like if this was just Calyrex, I feel like this game would still be kind of hard. But now you got a Calyrex and an Ursaluna. You only, you don't even really have that many heavy hitters. It still feels pretty scary. But if you do get the Fissure, you have to go for the Fissure here. If you miss, you go Stomping Tantrum. You cannot guarantee a knockout next turn. But we already saw it's not actually a guaranteed it's knockout on the enough. Calyrex. It survived, and it was I had, I believe that near guaranteed. No, it was. I think it was reduced HP that that I last game, right. but full HP. Oh, I'm gonna range. He's going for the foul play here. Going for one last dish effort. It has two chilling nays. That's true. That could it be hits huge a little damage. bit harder. It's we'll still not super kills. effective though. We've seen it so many times today. I just don't think it does enough damage. It does not. It lives at 35. But the stopping tantrum. Onto who? Onto who? Onto the Calyrex. Okay. Takes out the wow. Calyrex. Wow, beautiful. Well played. No trick rooms to worry about. So. Again, Calyrex is such a threatening Pokemon because you can make it go first consistently. Without that, it is a little... Uh, There's the Hyper Voice. Vulnerable. Does not remove either of the opponent Pokemon. We're seeing one more foul play in here before it goes down. Yeah. Or another move. It can even Protect, stall out a little bit longer. Yeah, I think Protect is a great option here. There's the Hyper Voice. Chris on both. Oh, it's going for the hot foul play. He wants to end it right here. Foul play, foul play, not doing a ton. He has to go for Fissure. Oh, There's Throat Chop. Oh! oh! Watch the Hyper Voice. That is wow. incredible. I didn't even think of Throat Chop as a move. Yeah, that's an incredible play coming up from Rishi. Again, this this game, unless something really weird happens, will most likely be going Rishi's way, but yeah, oh, there's the there forfeit. Yeah, this wow. Is a great game from both players, for Yeah, sure. an incredible game by both players there. So we will see Koridon make it to the finals versus, I'm not sure who the other two Pokemon are. Rishi, though, gets to the finals. Congratulations to Rishi, and congratulations to R10 for a great performance all weekend. Sure. I think R10 made it to the semifinals on day one, so now he finishes here back in semifinals on day two. Yeah, great performance. On day four.
Yeah, great performance all both of those days. And now, I mean, this team is going very, very well, especially if it's going up against another one of those Smeargle teams. It can definitely shut that one locket right down. But you have to consider the Terra Ghost that could mm -hmm. be coming there, the Pelipper that could be there as well, shut down the shuts down the sun and, and complicates things just a little bit more. Yeah, and complication in a game is already as complicated as Pokemon just really makes any decision-making process 10 times harder. Well, more than 10 times, exponentially harder. Every factor you add just makes the decision that much more difficult. And I just wanted to add that um, if I feel like the Coridon matchup into the Shadow Rider is even worse because it can't hit mm -hmm. that collision okay. course. Yeah. It has nothing super effective against it. It has the Flare Blitz and the Sun, which will hit hard. But if they have something to clear that, it's still going to be a very, very tough battle. But I think this got is the Gothitelle, at least. Yeah, I think this is the Gothitelle's interesting weak thing to Astral. of the meta here at St. Clair. I don't think we would have seen as many Smeargles. Yeah, I don't think we would have seen as many Smeargles played as we would if... This wasn't a four-day event. People were not playing Smeargle on day one and were not playing on day two. But we've seen three or four different Smeargles today. So I think people really developed. And there was a group that came together and said, we're going to use Smeargle. And maybe the Coridon players or some other players got wind of that and changed their teams and added God's Tell to counter Smeargle. Yeah. Exactly. Like if you, if you don't have that Goth Tell, if you don't have a taunt or a way to shut that down... Like, even if you do have a taunt, you don't have that shadow tag. Mm -hmm. It just is such a good support, Monik. It has the follow me. It has the spore threat. It has the decoration, which is another amazing move. It has the fake out pressure as well. So if you're yeah. able to get some fluidity in there, the swap out's going. And if, if you don't even need the swap out, it's just that strong. It's the best part of every support Pokemon that people run put into one small, <laughs> slow, frail body, basically. And I, and I hate to say it, but... You could honestly make it even better by giving it Terra Ghost. Shadow Tag doesn't affect that anymore. And now you have something I can swap in and out. So it, it, this isn't even fully developed yet. We're just yeah. seeing the beginning of this meta. Yeah, we did get word that our other semifinalist is our Windsor local, Emma. We have not seen a Windsor, a Windsor to Windsorite win all weekend. So this is the first chance for Windsor to get that win and put their self themselves on the name board of our champions today. So will Emma be able to do it? That's the question going up against Crydon. I don't know. It's going to be a hard battle. I'm pretty sure Emma is running the Ice Rider as well. Exactly. And now with all that setup, all that suspense, we will see the exciting conclusion of the Tetris series MSSs. And after a quick break.